welcome to Augsburg.
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Welcome to Augsburg, and we give thanks for your presence here today, wherever you are. And even though we are disconnected physically, it is God's love and God's Word that still draws us together. We'll be exploring God's Word deeper over the next few weeks, as we have two opportunities for growing in faith and understanding our relationship and our love for neighbor. You're invited to be part of the Intergenerational Sunday School class, which started today and continues for eight weeks, that explores matters of race, justice, policy, and privilege, and is an excellent time for us to understand our baptismal covenant and our call to love our neighbor. If you're interested in doing that, please contact me so that we can get you into the class. We also look forward to sharing in a book study on the color of compromise, which explores the work of race in the church that Pastor Lori will be beginning in August. And if you're interested in that, please contact her. Our bulletin is full of other information about important things happening in the life of the community that we draw you to today. And we encourage you to keep in touch with us, let us know your prayers, and stay connected even though we're not able to gather for worship today. Our service continues now as we hear God's word. A reading from Isaiah. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the fields shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, 
and to deal with the sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled to us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind is, that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since God's Spirit dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies, also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The Word of the Lord.
And yes, there are those in my life who have used this time to take up a new hobby, showing off all of the things they've learned. Others have delved into reading more books or learning a language or deepening their academic pursuits. And still others have found success in the kitchen or the garden or other places where they have cultivated growth. But for so many, this time that we were encouraged and expected to be able to do something, we haven't. We are often overwhelmed by the context of the day of just keeping to our routines, of caring for family, of working through our daily commitments, of finding a way to keep up at work. And in the midst of all those things, as we watch others succeed with their hobbies and talents and new pursuits, we find ourselves being able to claim nothing. I haven't developed any new hobbies over these four months that we've been apart from normal life. My boys taught me to play a video game, but I don't think that quite counts. I haven't had the opportunity to read more books or learn a new language. I'm still working on the two that I already know. I haven't exceeded my potential in the kitchen as I'm still limited to toast and macaroni and cheese. Frankly, I feel like a failure. This time that we live in, this COVID time, is a reminder that nothing seems right. And no matter what we try to do, we often feel like failures. It is something that is not simply to this time, but something that many of us experience regularly in life. When we set out to do something, when we strive to do something new or to grow or to gain new skills, and we find ourselves falling short. It's hard to fail. In society, we're taught not to fail. We're taught to strive and achieve, and failure is looked down upon. But in the midst of all of that, when we come to recognize our own failings, the things that we haven't been able to accomplish, the relationships that we haven't been able to repair, the parts of our life that we wish that we managed better. When we acknowledge that we are indeed failures, that is the space where we acknowledge our need for God. This gospel text that we hear today is a parable of a sower. Jesus has quite the crowd that is gathered here. It's so much so that he needs to remove himself from that crowd and go out onto a boat to be away enough to be able to project so many more can hear along the shore than just him standing among a smaller group. And he tells a parable, a parable of a sower who goes out to sow and drops the seeds into different places. And some fall on the path, and others fall on rocky ground. Some fall into soil that may have a moment of growth. And yet others fall into good soil, soil that yields forth fruit. I'm convinced that as Jesus talks about the one, and the idea that there is one who falls on rocks, and one who falls on paths, and one who falls on soil, that this isn't different people. I've often thought of this story over the years as that person and that person. But as I've read this text more and more, I realize that Jesus is just as much talking to an individual and reminding them that in their own lives, as the seeds are sown, each of these examples pertains to every one of us. So what about the seeds that are sown within us, the ideas, the dreams, the calls that God has for us that are dropped onto a path and are snatched away before we ever have the opportunity to pursue them? 
What about all the opportunities that we long to be part of that the world gets in the way of and there's never an opportunity to try? Or the ones that fall on rocky ground where it looks like maybe there's a chance that we can succeed only to be overwhelmed by so many challenges that nothing comes to fruition. Or then as Jesus has discussed what about those that are sore among thorns where there might be a little bit of growth, but everything else around us that distracts us and claims us, everything else in this world that is idolized chokes those things away. Our failures are not always our own. Our failures are a recognition of the patterns of our own lives, the patterns of the world around us, and the things that keep us from succeeding in our daily lives. And often, they're from within. But God is with us. We start each week in our worship service coming together before God and in the words of confession, acknowledging our failures. All the ways that we have failed in thought and word and deed, what we have said and done and left undone. When we look at our own lives, when we look in the mirror, we often feel like failures. Because the seeds that are sown in our lives, the opportunities that are before us, the ways that the Holy Spirit guides us don't always come to fruition. And maybe sometimes you feel like me, that you've disappointed God, that you've disappointed those who you're called to live in Christian community with, that you've disappointed those who you live in your home with, or those that you call your friends. And we look at ourselves as failures. But I'm convinced that in this text, there is a reminder that Jesus keeps sowing the seed. That God keeps laying out new opportunities made through the Holy Spirit. And that we are constantly being given opportunities to grow. For every time that we fail, there is one more time that God, once again, will work to bring new life. That's the beauty of this Romans 8 passage that we heard Julia read just a moment ago. And I look at verses 10 and 11. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his Holy Spirit that dwells in you. You know what this is saying in its simplest form? That even though we are dead to sin in the world, even though we are colossal screw-ups, even though we make mistakes and find ourselves failing all the time, God is with us through the power of the Spirit. And if the Spirit of God can raise Jesus from the dead, then the Spirit of God can be at work and give life to our mortal bodies as well. Because the Spirit continues to dwell in us. And whether we're on the path, the rocks, among the thorns, or actually in a place where we can find growth, God is still at work. There's been a concept that has been thought of throughout American Christianity for years now called the prosperity gospel. And that is that if we believe in Jesus hard enough, if we trust God enough, we will prosper. But I'm convinced of something different. We live in a gospel that understands failure. A Jesus who loves us so much that even though we fail, Jesus is with us again again and again. And Jesus will give us the tools and the people and the experiences around us to sustain us through all of those failures. One of my favorite musicians is Croner Johnny Cash. And I loved how he looked at his life recognizing many failures and struggles and transgressions along his journey but realized that that was not who he was. Johnny's quoted as saying, you build on failure, you use it as a stepping stone, 
Close the door on the past. You don't try to forget the mistakes, but you don't dwell in it. You don't let it have any of your energy or any of your time or any of your space. The words that Johnny said about failure are a reminder to us in the gift of forgiveness as well. That we're not called to forget our failures, rather we're called to learn from them. Because we're forgiven of our failures. That everything in life that we have not been able to do as it gives God glory, that all of the ways that we have been distracted by the sin of this world, that all the ways that we have let our idols of life choke us, that all of the ways the seeds of God have blown away in the midst of life's winds, that even though we have failed and fallen short, God still loves us. And we are reminded of that over and over and over again. So maybe you didn't learn how to cook. Maybe you didn't learn a new language. Maybe you didn't pick up a new hobby over these last many weeks that we've been apart. But go ahead and own being a failure. Go ahead and acknowledge your shortcomings. Because God loves a failure. And God is still at work in a failure. And God gives growth in a failure. Because even though we might feel judged by the world around us, God's love never fails. God's promise never fails. God's grace never fails. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith we share. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Creating God, we give you thanks for the gift of creation. We pray for the birds and animals who make their home in the trees and for lands stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustainably use what you have given. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abiding God, care for all who are in need. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. Today we lift up art, Brit. Wayne Green, James Henson, Emily and Harper Brashear, Judy Upfall, James Presnell, Pamela Barney, Chris and Family, Barbara Wise, Hazel Dubel, Rondi Lildahl, Kathy Olson, Diane Cornoyer, Milo Olson, Lisa Holland Teeter, Violet Fowler, Annette Cunningsworther, Kim Weeters, Wayne Cartwright, and all those who lift up on our lips and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renewing God, revive your church in this place. Nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted, that we might grow as disciples. Replace what has been depleted. Sustain our ministries and deepen relationships with the wider community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died. Comfort us in the sure and certain hope of resurrection. We remember Jimmy Cashin, William Leffler, Doris Haas, Joyce Stevenson, Arlen Blades, Anna Grace Jamalov, Boots Ogburn, Charlie White, Jane Maxey, Jean Hill, and Richard Teeny Chapel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
These plates represent the gifts of God's love shared by you as we continue to do God's work in the world. May all that we offer in the church and in our community be lifted up in service to our Lord and in love of our neighbor. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord. 